Today's session, we are going to start off with, and which is impact of AAC from early development of communication to literacy. Yeah, welcome aboard everyone who's here. We're happy to have you all here. Yeah, so um, a very warm welcome to Dr. Nimisha Mutaya from, she's basically from Sri Lanka, but uh, joining us from the US East Coast and it's really early times in her uh, time zone. So warm welcome to Nimisha. Thank you so much for making time for this series. Uh, so she is an SLP and a PhD specializing in AAC from Penn State University. She is an assistant prof uh, communication Disorders and Sciences Department, State University of New York in Cortland, USA. With more than 17 years of experience, uh, she's been a key collaborator in creating and establishing AWA Sri Lanka, which is the first AAC app in Sri Lanka. So she's uh, extra special to the AWA's team. She's played a very uh, crucial role in bringing up AWA Sri Lanka in partnership with us. Uh, she's in charge of the AAC lab at Ayati Center named Dhwani that provides the much needed uh, AAC services for children in Sri Lanka. Over to you, Nimisha. Thank you, Lalita. Um, good evening to those of you who are joining from India and Sri Lanka and those of you from anywhere else, whatever your time zone is. I'm uh, excited to be doing this session, um, particularly e excited to talk about um, Avaj Sri Lanka and uh, the role that AAC has played in uh, for children and families in Sri Lanka and share um, some videos and uh, information from, um, from them. Today I'm going to talk about um, the impact of AAC from early development of communication um, all the way to literacy and I'm going to share like I said um, uh, a lot of videos from Sri Lanka about how um, AAC has really played a crucial role there uh, for both families um, and for children. Uh, just uh, quickly, uh, some of the objectives that I'm hoping you will achieve or you will be able to uh, learn about by the end of this session, kind of the role of AAC, both low-tech and high-tech, and about implementation of it. Um, <clears throat> Uh, to identify multiple functions of communication through AAC. I found that a lot of people are very good at, you know, starting off with AAC and, uh, and we use it uh, very well for requesting, but how to take your child beyond requesting to other functions of communication. Um, you'll also be able to um, start to uh, identify the role of literacy um, for children who use AAC and how important that role is. Um, and also to uh, see a little bit um, about the impact that literacy can have on a child's communication. So firstly, I want to do a quick introduction to AAC for anyone who's not familiar with it. So AAC is basically augmentative and alternative communication. It's kind of a mouthful. And so it's much easier to just say AAC. Essentially, what it does is either su um, supplement or it replaces speech for anyone with severe communication disabilities. And this can include both unaided, where you're using you know, signs or some type of gestures, um, so unaided as well as and words, um, as well as any type of aided system. So when we talk about aided, we're talking about low tech, meaning pictures, um, written words, um, as well as high tech, which would be, for example, Avaz, the app. Um, so here's an example of an unaided system. Uh, both of these are examples of unaided systems. One is a communication book. Um, and this communication book, as you can see, developed um, this one right here using um, printed out photos from the Avaz app. Uh, and then uh, this one on, on uh, this side of the screen is a communication bo uh, board. And this was actually developed for a child um, whose family was trilingual. So they used English 
Singhala and Tamil at home. And so um, you can see that uh, the text is in all three languages. Uh, I want to talk a little bit. So my research is very much focused on implementation of AAC in low and middle income countries like India and Sri Lanka. And so, um, you know, as part of that, we have to think about and look at the research that's currently out there on AAC. And a lot of it has been conducted in, you know, North America um, based on kind of uh, the dominant culture and linguistic background being English. But if we think about this in terms of individuals who are, you know, speaking languages other than English or individuals from multicultural backgrounds, this intersection of disability, culture, technology, and now language brings a whole different um, challenge. And that looks quite different um, compared to, you know, the research that we're reading that's a majority being published in North America. So unfortunately, there's limited research that's addressing AAC implementation in low and middle income countries, like the countries we're from, like I said, like Sri Lanka and India. So I think it's really important for us to build that research base uh, about how to implement AAC in contexts like ours. And in order to build that research base, we have to start by creating more awareness, right, about AAC. We have to start more conversations about what AAC is and what it looks like when children from contexts like India and Sri Lanka are using AAC. So a really important thing to think about is how early can we introduce AAC, right? How early should it start? And really the answer to that is as early as possible. Um, when I was at Penn State as a PhD student, I remember one of the research projects we had was with uh, children with Down syndrome. And we were introducing AAC to children who were less than one, one year old. So as early as possible is the answer. And really, the earlier we introduce AAC, the better. Because one thing is that AAC will support a child's communication, uh, including the possibility of improving their verbal speech, right? So we know that AAC, you um is a visual system. And so it maximizes on, on, for example, children with autism who are mostly visual learners. And so it might encourage them to actually produce more verbal speech. And also remember the longer we wait to introduce AAC to a child um, who has, you know, either significant communication difficulties or complex communication needs, um, the more frustrated that child is going to become because of not having access to a way to communicate. Um, and really, you know, for all of the, the speech language pathologists or speech and language therapists who are, you know, part of this webinar, it's our responsibility to provide all individuals that we serve with some way to communicate. And that needs to be done as soon as possible, right? It's a communication is a basic human right. And that's probably one of the biggest responsibilities you have as, as a speech and language therapist. Okay, so I'm going to share a quick video here of one of my students um, just starting to introduce a very basic low-tech communication book um, to a little one with autism. She's pretty young. I want to say she's about three years old here. Um, and you'll see her uh, using the low-tech communication book to request for food, a very basic, basic function. So let's watch this video. So the video is actually in Tamil, but you don't have to understand uh, the the spoken words to understand what's going on there, right? So um, the student modeled the two pictures that were available, grapes or banana, and the child 
with um, a lot of intentionality pointed to the grapes and then she uh, got access to that. Um, so very quickly, populations that would benefit from AAC, again, children or adults who have these kinds of diagnoses, so cerebral palsy, autism, Down syndrome, uh, intellectual disabilities or intellectual impairments, many other syndromes. Basically, anyone who has either no natural speech or um, even individuals who may have some speech, but might be very difficult to understand. Um, so it's a, it plays an important role um, in augmenting or supplementing um, these individuals' speech as well. Also for children who we know from their diagnosis, such as say Down syndrome, where we're already expecting a delay in their speech. We don't need to wait for their speech to develop. We can already start to use AAC as a way to support their communication. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a video of um, a little one uh, with a diagnosis of autism. Uh, this is a video that um, mom, so of mom interacting with her. And this is prior to the introduction of AAC. I do wanna say that this little one, she's a level three child with autism. So pretty uh, severe. She's completely nonverbal. Uh, and you'll see mom is trying really hard to, you know, engage her in a task and like play with her. Um, uh, I do want to draw your attention. The subtitles to the video are at the bottom. So um, please follow along uh, reading the subtitles. Um, so yeah, so let's see how this little one um, is communicating or not communicating in this video. <laughs> Okay. So we didn't see really any communication from the little girl except for some vocalizations. So I want to show you now with this little one. Again, remember, she's a level three child with autism, completely nonverbal, um, has, you know, pretty textbook characteristics of autism. Um, so you see mom using Aval Sri Lanka with her in this video. Um, and you can see her, you know, watch what she does. Um, watch her engagement. See, you know, compare it to the pre-video. and. Um, yeah, so we'll see, we'll see what you think. Okay, so again, very quickly, just a quick little video to share how mom is modeling. And mom had recorded her own voice and added uh, this little girl's own toy. So it was very much personalized. And then you can see her very intentionally indicating a choice of which toy she wanted to play with. Okay, again, I want to, sh again, share the impact of AAC across different diagnoses. So that was a little girl with autism. Here's a little one. Uh, she's five years old here. Very, um, very intelligent. Um, and you can see this is prior to us introducing AAC to her. Very intentional, trying very hard to communicate with her teacher. Um, and she does have some speech, but it's difficult to understand her. Uh, and so watch this interaction between this little girl and her teacher. Kevin, 
पान पांग पान 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 क्या पानी में पान क्या रतु 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 बन आते दिक्कत लगाने लगा So again, um, this little one trying very hard to communicate, um, and the teacher is having significant difficulty understanding what she's saying. She's doing a lot of guessing. So the teacher is really good in that she's using strategies to try to understand what the child is saying. Um, hoppers, for those of you who are not familiar with Sri Lankan food, is a, a Sri Lankan food that's commonly eaten. Um, so look at this little one now. We um, developed a very simple, very low cost AAC communication method for her. Uh, this video, actually, these videos were taken <clears throat> um, at the school. This was part of my um, pilot study for my dissertation. And so the teacher just used materials she had around her and um, developed the AAC tool. Um, but remember that especially with AAC, it's not just the tool that you're using, but the strategy, the communication strategy that the partner is using. And so the teacher is uh, offering her a choice between two colors. Uh, so kind of similar to, you know, the previous video I showed, trying to identify what color this child wants to color with. Um, uh, and again, just look at the simplicity of the AAC system, but how it changes the ease of which this child communicates. Again, very simple AAC system, but um, a much like I said, a much easier response from the child because, you know, it was much easier for her to point to the color that she wanted to color with than trying to verbally say it. Okay, so at the beginning of the webinar, I did mention that, you know, I think a lot of people uh, use AAC for the purposes of requesting. Um, and then from there, it's kind of hard to think about what else can we use AAC for? And so I wanted to share some insights um, and share some videos of how we've used AAC for other purposes as well. Okay, So um, AAC can be used to support a child to communicate for many different purposes or a variety of reasons. Um, a lot of people think it's used mostly for requesting, but really it can be used for so much more. Uh, one, to provide information where the child is giving information about themselves to ask questions, like think about, so I have a three and a half year old and she's constantly asking questions. So think about, you know, a child who uses AAC probably has all those questions in their mind, but just no way of asking them. To answer questions, again, a very important um, function of communication to make comments like, wow, I like that, or that's beautiful, or I don't like that. Um, to express their feelings, and most importantly, for fun and for play. Okay, I think many of you have maybe seen this video, but I'll just share a little bit because um, in this video, you'll see this young man uh, who has a diagnosis of cerebral palsy, actually young boy. And um, you'll see in this short clip, he's using AAC for a variety of purposes. He's answering questions. He's providing information about his family. Um, he is um, talking about social connections, that he loves his family. He's requesting. So a number of a uh, variety of functions of communication that are being satisfied um, in this short clip. Again, the subtitles are at the bottom. I hope you can follow along. <laughs> Mangi Paul, 
आइया के लिए किन्ना हरी पे न खाओ दिन में रामा के पावले अम्मा के लिए किन्ना आइया ही अम्मा ही पे न खाओ दिन में रामा ताता वाले पावले इन्ने आइया ही अम्मा ही ताता ही ना नहीं तो वह पावले आया था आधे रे इधर रामा Okay, so again, you know, he, he was able to use AAC and, or use Avaaz Sri Lanka there for a variety of functions of communication to provide information, to request, to answer questions, etc. Uh, I'm going to show you another video here about of um, one of um, my colleagues, one of the therapists in Sri Lanka, incorporating AAC into a play situation. Uh, this is a little boy with cerebral palsy. And you can see that um, she's providing him choices and then he's going to choose what he wants to play with. Um, let's take a quick look at that and then um, see what else. So you can see the therapist is doing a really nice job modeling on Avaz Sri Lanka, but also modeling gestures, right? Um, so unaided as well. And so using a really nice um, uh, example of total communication here, a multimodal communication, which is so important for um, some of the children we, uh, you know, who use um, AAC. Um, and so here, because of his cerebral palsy, he had you know significant motor uh, difficulty in pointing, and which is why she had to reduce uh, the number of pictures and see if he um, did better with that, or, or to see if that was easier for him. Okay, we're going to see uh, really a star that uh, one of our stars who use AAC so beautifully, uh, or use Avaz Sri Lanka so beautifully. And so this little one, he's working with his mom here, and she's trying to encourage him to speak in sentences. Okay. Um, 
So let's see how uh, how that what that looks like. Uh, again, the subtitles are at the bottom of the screen, so I hope you can follow that. And so she's encouraging him to uh, you know combine words and put them together to form the sentence. <laughs> Is instructing him where to find the words. Hmm. 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 Tata Kotata Tata Tata Get there. Oh, Ava Kuava Ava 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 Kimaki and then put a Tata. Okay, again, a mom encouraging him to speak in sentences, and he's just doing such a great job with that. But she's also instructing him where to find the words and how to put those words together to express the sentence. We have this, this same uh, little guy again. And here he is, um, mom is encouraging him to express his feelings. Again, talking about those various functions of communication. Um, so let's take a look at that. And he's talking about him uh, being afraid. So he uh, was afraid of something. And then mom, uh, you know, encouraged him to use his AAC. So Ava Sri Lanka again here to express that he's afraid. Um, all right, so I think he was afraid of like, the blender or something, and so he was covering his ears. Um, here's another example of um, a little boy that we worked with, um, and he is, his mom has read a storybook to him, and then she's asking him questions based on the story, and he's responding to those questions um, using avas. And you can see how um, proficient he is with it, how quick he is with it, um, because he's gotten so used to using AAC. And so with practice comes automaticity. And so the more we use, you know, the communication method with the child, the more we think about it as the child's voice, the quicker and the more efficient they are going to become with it. Again, the subtitles are at the bottom. I hope you can follow it. And then I would... Ika mat teka kali ka goviye kiti alo. Yaat punchi diye niya kiti alo. Ika davasa goviya yar yaat kewa lo polate gihin. Elu kiri tika kui kunan na kiya la. Hari the dam putte. Ne ne mama bhi. Me dam me ba me la me yaat kui kaagi kiri kui kunan na kiya la. Elu wa. Very good. Elu kiri kui kunan na kiya la. Tim me polate ana kote ramya hita ganu ramya hita hita ana valu mama kiri viku nala mata halli hambo nama ite pasu mang kukulu tika mila taka ano agila kau da kukula ah kukulu tika mila taka ano agila pasu kukulu tika loku na ham pasu kau nda to kan nadi la loku na ada pasu mangu ganu valu uro hatra dene kau da ganne हमुना Alut gauma gana kina. E gauma lassana tenda gina. Ganula my pirmula my okumia diha.
Okay, so you get the idea, right? So mom reads the story and then she asks him questions, like comprehension questions, and he's responding really um, quickly uh, using avas um, and accurately. So clearly understands the story well. Uh, Nimisha, so, there's a couple of questions sure? that have come. Sure. Uh, yeah. So uh, one says, uh, Tabitha Wolf says, I'm an SL. Uh, SLP in Hyderabad, UK qualified. I use total approach in my sessions, specs, board signing, drawings, and text. I sometimes am confused as to whether to start the child on pecs or pointing. I personally prefer pointing, but many of the kids have apraxia and struggle with this. Do you have any strategies to help with pointing to visuals? Hmm. Um, uh, great question, Tabitha. I mean, I won't say I have strategies as such. I would say go with the child's preference, right? So what we found, especially with some children with autism, they like that feedback of having to remove something. So like in the first video I showed you, um, the child wasn't, uh, I think she did point, but um, with some of the children, they prefer to remove the picture. And so we have, um, you know, the picture printed out on a sheet of paper, and then we print out another piece of, uh, another picture of that same thing so say the grapes cut it out and paste it on there and so have it being removable for them like pecs um because some children just like that feedback of having to remove versus pointing and so i think go with whatever the child's preference is and i love that you're trying total communication i think that's a good way to go um yeah the next one is from tanvir um fatima who says how do, how do you start using high-tech ac with an asd child uh, again, I would start with whatever the child is motivated by, right? So, um, you know, if you look at, um, I mean, a lot of children are probably motivated by songs, um, like, give, you know, starting with a choice of what song do you want to sing or food. A lot of everyone is motivated pretty much by food, toys. Those are always good places to start, to initiate AAC. Again, um, starting with the child's preference is what I would say, what I would recommend. Thanks. Uh, one more from Nazma. Uh, would AAC improve a child's verbal communication who is non-verbal and who's also undergone cochlear implant? Hmm. Um, again, not a lot of research on this, so I'm going to be cautious about how I answer. It's going to depend on when, at what age, that child's cochlear implant was done. We know that the optimal time for language development in terms of verbal speech is going to be before the age of seven. And if that child's cochlear implant was done pretty early on, um, uh, if they were, you know, I don't know, before the age of two, and they've had a lot of um, auditory you know, stimulation, auditory verbal stimulation or AVT, um, then I don't see why that child would have a need for AAC But at that point. But if it's a child whose the cochlear implant was done later on, then probably, or if it's a child who has a multiple disability, not just cochlear implant, like not just a hearing impairment, but maybe cerebral palsy or maybe an intellectual disability or maybe a syndrome, then definitely I would recommend AAC. Uh, for that in that situation we've used um we've used avas with children who have either been um uh, aided with a hearing aid later on uh, or are children with multiple disabilities yeah thanks for that um there are a few more questions i mean there are a lot more questions shall, shall we wait um, I, I, yeah, I think a few more slides I yeah want yeah to yeah i think we'll go ahead with your quickly. yeah your... I, i'm just going to touch on this very quickly um, so in terms of literacy, it, it plays a huge role for everyone in all children's lives, but especially important for children who have significant communication difficulties or complex communication needs who may not be able to verbally express themselves. Um, but, you know, despite how important literacy is for all children, a lot of children who have significant communication difficulties are not taught to read. And that is because a lot of teachers and even parents and even SLTs or SLPs think that in order to learn to read, the child should first be able to speak. We know that you know oral language forms the foundation for reading and writing. But how does this work for children who need AAC? I'm gonna show you in a minute. And it's, Literacy is even more important for individuals who use AA, 
who use AAC because it can provide them with yet another way to communicate and to express themselves, right? So beyond pictures. Um, so literacy is the only thing that would help an AAC user be generative, like be able to type a novel utterance or a novel message that is not available on their AAC system. So, you know, systems like Ava Sri Lanka or Ava's, you know, India, um, the child is limited to the pictures that they have available in front of them. Okay, so, you know, in terms of food, what if the child thinks of um, some food like dosa that's not on their AAC system? How are they going to ask for it? They can't unless they can type, in which case they can type the word dosa. So literacy is the only thing that will make a child truly generative, which is why it plays an even more important role for children who use AAC. Um, so like I said, you know, traditionally we think of oral language being, being the foundation for um, reading and writing. But with children who use AAC, you can see it's more a cyclical model where um, AAC would support reading, reading would again support AAC. So these things, reading, sorry, speaking, listening, reading, writing, uh, support each other. It's not that we need speech to form the foundation for later reading and writing. For children who use AAC, um, all of these things support each other. I hope that's clear. And this is a model from Copenhagen et al. Uh, so I'm going to show you a quick video of a mom introducing um, this is at the very start of literacy where this little boy knows only a few letter sounds. And so mom is telling him the sound and then he's typing. This is a large key keyboard that you see here on the screen. He has cerebral palsy. So he has motor def difficulties and it would be difficult for him to type on a regular keyboard. And so we're using a large key keyboard. Mom is covering some of the letters to just make it easier for him visually to scan. And she's saying the letter sounds. So remember when we're introducing literacy for children with AAC, we should take a phonics-based approach. So she's saying K and he's finding the letter. She's not saying the letter name. She's not saying type C, type A. No, she's just saying the letter sound. K, A, T. And he's finding the letter and he's starting to type. So this is at the very, very beginning. K. Huh. Very good. So again, he only knows a few letter sounds, but already with those letter sounds, mom is encouraging him to type so that he can already see the connection between the individual letter sounds and how the sounds come together to make a word. Um, so this kind of activity you can do on Avaz as well. So Avaz has a keyboard and I would encourage you to start to, to use that keyboard to encourage literacy in any children that you're, that you're already using Avaz with. Um, if, you're, if they're currently only using pictures, you can think about starting to, to introduce them to literacy through the Avaz keyboard. Okay, this is a young man. He is, I think he's 15 years old here. He's very dear to my heart. Um, he's a, he, I used to see him when I lived in Sri Lanka, completely nonverbal, level three autism. You'll see here on his hand, um, he has like a pretty significant bite marks, so self-injurious behaviors, uh, lots of sensory issues. You can see he's pretty sound sensitive, so he's covering his ears, lots of mouthing, which is why he has the chewy tube to help him regulate that. Um, I used to see him in my clinic in Sri Lanka, which unfortunately was next door to a ice cream shop, um, which makes it very challenging to see any children um, without them wanting to go to the ice cream shop. And so here he's not very happy that he had to come to see me without, you know, going to the ice cream shop. So I've created a visual schedule here with um, it's a it's with text because he can read which a lot of uh, SLTs didn't think he could read just by looking at, you know, the amount of behaviors that he had. Uh, and so I'm trying to encourage him to, we're just starting to use uh, an app that allows typing. And I'm just starting to teach him where to find the letters and to respond to communicate using this app. Do you want headphones? Do you want headphones? 
Tommy. Yes or no? Do you want headphones? Yes. Okay, so he wanted to get through the session quickly so that he can go get the ice cream afterwards. Okay, this is the same young man in a better mood here. Um, so here um, we're using the same app to respond to questions. Um, so I've, I've read a book with him. Uh, it's Christmas time, so it's some some book related to Christmas. And then I'm modeling uh, the question also on the app for the same reason, you know, so that he can understand how to use the app. So I'm uh, modeling on it and asking him the questions and then he's responding uh, by typing. How is Santa's cat feeling? How is Santa's cat feeling? Yeah, let's not do that. Tell me. How is Santa's cat feeling? Tell me. Feeling. Find it here. Feel. Feeling. Feeling. Feeling what? Mm. Mm. Feeling what? <laughs> Tell me. Feeling and okay. And feeling angry. No, he's feeling angry. <coughs> okay, so I think you get the idea. I'm trying hard not to prompt him too much. So I'm showing him where some of the letters are, and then I'm trying to step back to allow him to allow him to type by himself. Um, so again, very quickly before we take the questions, I really want to thank the families who allowed me to share these videos. Um, I really think you know that there's power in showing how families, how parents have used uh, AAC um, to uh, improve or enhance their child's communication. And I really want to thank my wonderful AAC team at the Dwani Lab, um, Avishka, Chiranti, um, Lakshani, um, Gayanti, thank you so much for all the support and all my colleagues at um, the IIT Center in Sri Lanka. All right, happy to take questions. Here's my contact info for anyone who wants to uh, get in touch. Yeah, um, thank you, uh, Nimisha. So we'll continue with the questions. Sure. Um, I'm, I'll just try to combine a couple of questions so that we move through it quickly because sure. we are ready, I think, we have 10 minutes left. We'll try to cover as much. Uh, is AAC helpful for children with language delay and with low IQ? That's Definitely. 
Yeah. Uh, definitely. Um, it definitely has a role uh, that it can help, especially with children with language delays. It might help them to, you know, speed up that process of trying to verbally communicate. But also, you know, during that period of language delay, it'll give them a way to communicate, which is really important. Uh, for children with low IQs also, it could, you know, play a, a significant role there um, in terms of seeing the visual, um, you know, might encourage um, again, multisensory kind of learning. And so I, I would think that it would um, help them. But we have to think about what kind of visuals we would want to use. You know, if it's a child with low IQ, they might benefit from real photos versus uh, symbols. Yeah. And uh, I guess, as they say, there are no prerequisites for AAC, just exactly. a cliche. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it, it's so true that, uh, yeah, I, as I think Karen Erickson would say, uh, the child has to be breathing and that's about it. Exactly. Yeah. Eligible That's for right. say the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I see a quick uh, question here above about uh, a child who had seizures and then lost their speech. Um, I think AAC definitely has a role to play there as well. You can definitely try. It might encourage them to start to produce verbal speech again. Again, we have research that says that AAC can, may possibly improve verbal speech. Yeah. Um, Janani says... My five-year-old son using AAC, understanding and using AAC well. He has self-injurious behavior. And sometimes he, he wants prompting. And for using AWAS, kindly explain how to avoid prompting in future. Yeah, um, it's hard. It's hard to find that balance. I would say start with the least to most prompting, right? So start with, you know, you model and then just wait and see if he does it uh, by himself, especially children with autism, once they get used to that prompting, they become really prompt dependent and then it's hard to, you know, for them to do it independently. Um, with the self-injurious behaviors, I would analyze the behavior to identify why it's occurring um, because every all behavior ha has a reason for occurring. So probably doing like a functional behavior assessment to identify the reason. Um, but yeah, like I said, with the prompting, going from a least to most and you know, I tell I tell SLTs or speech language pathologists all the time, one of the biggest mistakes that we make sometimes is that we talk too much. So, you know, once you model, zip and just wait and see if the child, what the child is going to do. Because the more you wait, the more they will realize the onus is on them. Right. Uh, Vijay says uh, her child is 30 years old. He can't, he can read, but can't comprehend much. Will he benefit? Uh, definitely. I think you can try. Again, there's no harm in trying. And there's it's never too late to introduce AAC or to, to start to teach a child, uh, an, 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 even an adult, to read, an adult with developmental disabilities. It's never too late. Yeah, absolutely. And I can second that because we started with adults with 32 years old and they're doing pretty good. Yeah. Never too late. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of research out there also um, with adults with developmental disabilities, including research that's been done by my mentor, uh, Dr. Kathy Drager. And we have seen benefits for sure. Okay. Um, Madhukar says, what's the cost of the device? You're th that is available on our website on avasapp.com, avazapp.com. It's uh, 12,000 for lifetime. And we have a sale currently coming up next week, which is going to be at 50% off. So you can certainly avail that. Uh, Preeti says, if receptive language is not good and receptive language, the gap is too much. Yeah. All the more reason for AAC. These, that's yeah. exactly the kind of child that you know would benefit from AAC. Uh, Kirtana says, is phonics better for children with autism while starting off with spelling or spell to communicate? Uh, phonics, again, the National Reading Panel has shown us that phonics is uh, one of the, you know, um, evidence-based practices. Is That's one of the approaches to go with uh, literacy. But also for children, they would benefit from sight words, right, where you show the entire word and they learn it as a whole, like the word the is not a word you can break down phonetically, but when they see the whole word, they learn it as the, and then they can use it in that way. So both approaches, phonics and sight words. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, Anup says, we are already using Abbas for high motivation requests and the child can use it independently, consistently with everyone. But there are very few in number. Problem is when we try to move to anything new, he always goes back to the ones he really likes really fast. So not able to add anything new to his vocabulary. Hmm. Um, 
<clears throat> if this is a child with autism, that makes sense to me because they're very comfortable with what they're doing. Maybe also exposing him to new, um, you know, new things, new contexts, so that he feels the need to use uh, that new vocabulary that you're introducing. Um, you can also try to, you know, on Avaz, you, you have a way of hiding some vocabulary so that it would encourage him to use other things. Yeah. Asanka says, repetitive use of phrases on AAC, how do you help? Mm. From Sri Lanka. Yeah. Again, uh, one of the things is I think I wonder why they're repetitive, repetitively using that. Is that almost like an RRB and they're stimming off of that? Again, you can hide some of those phrases and try to see, uh, encourage them to use, you know, other utterances. But also, I feel like maybe this is a, a person, an individual who hasn't really understood the role of AAC. And so trying to, um, you know, see how you can really teach them the value of what AAC can do. Yeah. Um, a child who's new to AAC keeps on changing the apps and randomly keeps on swiping. How do you help me, Rasha? Okay, so changing the apps as in changing the pictures and making changes on there. Um, I know with the swiping, Avaz has a button that would prevent the swiping and then you have to press the down arrow to go up and down. About changing the pictures, so are they able to go into edit mode and do all of that? If they're able to do all of that, I mean, that's... That's pretty significant. That's probably a child you want to start to now introduce literacy and move to that um, aspect. Maybe they're bored with the pictures. I don't know. Yeah. Um, before we move to the next question, I'd like to launch the poll. So you can continue. I will we'll continue with the questions, but I'm just quickly launching the poll so that you can tell us how likely are you to recommend this session to other parents or professionals on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most likely and 1 is the least likely. So while you take uh, give us your answers, uh, we'll move on to more questions. Um, Asanka again says anything related to gestural language processing. Uh, yeah, we'll be... We're not covering that right now. Um, the sale, you can take a look at Vigi. It will be on our website or you can join our uh, WhatsApp. We'll just send you a link to the WhatsApp group. You can join it and then we'll be keeping you updated. Uh, Nazma says, would AAC improve a child's verbal communication who's non-verbal and who's all... Okay, that's already taken. Yeah, cochlear implant has been covered. Um, going into the chat window, there are quite a few questions there. I'm dealing with a four-year-old female, Gayatri says, the child has many single words, uh, started introducing Avas for the past three months, couldn't find, could find difference in terms of grabbing words, but was ending up with obsessive behavior pattern for phone. Kindly suggest some ideas. <clears throat> Again, that's the thing. Like we have to um, establish clear boundaries of this is the child's communication method. This is their voice, which means we can can't use the phone for other things. No YouTube, nothing. So I tell parents, you know, all those apps need to be deleted. And we're using, if we're using a specific AAC system for the child, so say it's a vase on a device, then that's the only thing the child is using on that device. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, Harita says, is it Android or iPad? Yeah, we have Avaz on both. You can download it on either device. <clears throat> uh, Barneshwari says, can AC be useful um, for minimally speaking four and a half years old SPD and AHD child? Yes, uh, we have covered that, <clears throat> Min minimally speaking, yes. Um, changing apps as it goes into YouTube or other fun apps, Mira Shah. Yeah, so if you are using an iPad, there is a way for you to lock the child into the communication app, right? Like if uh, through uh, guided access, it's an accessibility feature on the iPad that allows you to add a passcode. So even if the child presses the home button, they can't get out. Unfortunately, we don't have something like that on Android, but iPad you do. Right. Um, Nazma says, would AAC improve a child's verbal communication who's nonverbal and is not Okay, that's already oh, yeah. come yeah. in again. Yeah, she was she was two plus when implanted. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, we didn't see much of initiation of conversations. Okay, so we okay. didn't see. Okay, all right. So um, 
I mean, the videos I had didn't have an example of com back and forth conversation, but definitely that is something, you know, you should be working on and um, uh, a child should be doing. But again, that ability to ask a question and respond to a question are almost like prerequisites to then having a conversation, right? So before we can straight away start to work on a conversation, we need the child to be able to do those things first. Yeah, um, I think we've covered most of the questions. Any other questions? Um, Again, there's some questions about like apps, like, okay, I'm using touch. Yeah, specific apps. Apps. Protocol, protocol to go is the best. There is no best app. It's like which app matches the child's needs the best. And so, you know, even if somebody is using Avaaz or someone else is using Proloquo to go, that may not be what works for your child. And so that's why uh, it's important to, you know, meet and do a proper assessment with the speech and language therapist to really find out what would work best. Yeah. Uh, Divya says, how do you start with kids who get super excited as soon as they see the tab and just try to scroll down? Yeah, again, you need to get rid of all the other apps and use it solely for the purpose of communication and model and show them the power of what communicate of what AAC can do. So like in that first video, when the child touched the, the picture of the grapes, immediately my student gave her the grapes and then paired the picture with the actual object of grapes to show them this is what we're trying to do. This is how we're trying to establish communication. Yeah. Uh, Farin says starting AAC at an early age will not depend uh, on, on the kid for AAC only, or do they show improvements in speech along with AAC or post AAC introduction? Again, all of the research that's been done on this topic tells us that um, using AAC will not mm -hmm. interfere or deter with the development of speech. It will only further improve that child's verbal speech production, um, if at all. And moreover, it will give them a way to communicate. So yes, yeah, start early. Right. Um, Shami says, would it help with descriptive language, please? My child is in pre-verbal stage. He can request and familiarize with some other sentences. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like I said, I showed some of the videos showing the use of AAC for other functions of communication. So definitely going into longer sentences, asking questions, answering questions, providing information. You need to start thinking about some of those. Um, last couple of questions. What are the child explores hours for a longer period of time rather than focusing on goals? That's okay. That's like part of a child babbling, you know, prior to right. them starting to use words. I've never seen a child, a baby, like come out with uh, a meaningful first word straight away. So if the child is exploring, let them explore, right? But get to the point where then we're showing them how to use it meaningfully. And the only way they'll understand how to do that is if you model and you use it meaningfully. Right. Uh, Krishna says phonics or words, which would be more, which would be more helpful to non-verbal, uh, non, uh, non-verbal lower IQ kids. I think, again, it'll depend. Like I said before, usually with reading, we go with a two-pronged approach, phonics, as well as sight words, where we're showing the child the entire, the whole word, and they're learning it by memory. So I would say use a two-pronged approach and see which one the child is responding to better. Right. About and uh, specific intervention strategies for adults with complex communication needs? I would say, you know, like I didn't talk specifically about the partner communication strategies that, you know, you should be using, but it was indirect in the video. So like providing communication opportunities, how do you do that? asking questions, um, by providing choices, um, providing uh, those individuals with a means or a way to communicate, you know, through avas or through pictures. You saw lots of examples of that and then modeling so that the child or the individual or the adult understands this is a way to communicate. This is a form of communication. Yeah, um, so I think we are done with all the questions. So thank you so much, Nimisha, for a, a very engaging session. And thanks a lot for sharing all those videos, which were really helpful. And I'm sure a lot of our viewers uh, could get a really good idea of how to model and how to take AAC further.